everyone. Thank you for tuning in to H&N Creations. Uh, today's episode, we are going to show you uh, the table that we built for the cabin. And we're pumped. It took us all winter long. And we also did a couple other things. We did uh, countertops and cabinets. But we're going to break this up into different videos because when editing it, which has been taking months, it almost takes as long as building it, um, it's a little longer than what we wanted. So this will be a shorter one. So stay tuned. So our cut list for this was uh, mostly get a bunch of one and a half inch slabs that we'd use for the countertop and the top of the table and the rest of the boards we just cut them in one inch slabs so we could use those to build the cabinets. Now we did have a couple larger chunks set aside that we used for the, the feet of the table and then we had to epoxy them. They had some spots that were uh, some openings basically so we'll show those also in the video. So now that things are milled, we need to get everything sorted and plain. And, and this took a long time. This took a couple hours just to figure out what we're gonna do with this wood and what's going where, and because we only have so much to work with. But the, the issue we have is when um, we're doing a lot of the planing, you know, you can get it all cattywampus. Short story long, I built this table. If you guys like this table, let me know in the comments if you want me to cover it. Let's get on to what we're doing. Um, so of all the wood we have, this wood is gonna end up being the countertop. This little bit of wood over here will be the backsplash, these two pieces. And then all that over there is gonna be the table for the breakfast nook. So we're gonna do all of this, and then we're gonna use the hackberry that we have um, that is in another video, you can see some of that. We're gonna use that for the cabinets. So, let's get going. This next step that I'm doing is, is trying to get straight edges on all these. Uh, there's a number of ways to do it, but I do know I can run it through the table saw. Clearly, you can see I've got an extension. My fence is just not long enough. So I went and grabbed my, my six foot level and put it on there and tried a couple boards to test, actually the two backsplash pieces. So it worked out pretty good. So the next step, what we're gonna do is take uh, these boards here and then these boards here and we're gonna go ahead and get the edges trued up. These here are for the actual breakfast nook table. And then the remaining pieces I have over here, the shop is a mess by the way, <laughs> but these are actually gonna be the countertops. So today's goal is we're gonna go ahead and get all these edges nice and done up proper and straight, and then we're gonna to get to some glue up. So stay tuned, we'll show you how it's done. <clears throat> so some of these boards, as you can see, this. I don't know if you can see down that chalk line, but this guy is, it's pretty off. So what I'm gonna do is first kind of free bird it a bit and just did a chalk line all the way down. 
and I'm going to try to match that up just to rough it in because once I get it roughed in, then I could run along the guide. Now, I have some room here. I don't want to waste a lot of material, but you got to do what you got to do. So this is kind of going to be the next step. So a better way to do this is to get a nice straight board, maybe a store-bought one, put it underneath on one side of this board, clamp it, and then use that as a reference board to run along the fence. That way, one of the edges will be straight. Then you can unclamp it, flip it over, and finish up. I'll be doing that soon. So it's a time consuming process, but it works. So this board has pretty darn straight edges. I have the max lens on this camera, so it's a little fish-eyed, but that's straight. This is a fun part. You get to look at the wood, and this is just so beautiful. You get to pick which side. Do I like this side? Do I like this side? Um, you see these holes. You know what? I have epoxy. I kind of like it. It's fun. It's extra time, but it looks really pretty. So anyhow, um, that's kind of what we're doing. And when you have a piece that you have to cut off like this, you could fill that with epoxy and make something someday. I'm a hoarder when it comes to wood. I mean, look at how beautiful that is. Come on, how could you not keep it? So this kind of stuff, I'm just, pieces we cut off, I'll on to them, do something with them someday. So there's one other thing that I wanted to mention that, um, that I did is I numbered these. So this is one. This is two, it's probably hard to see in the angle. That one you can see a little more clear. It's three, four, five, six, seven. So I lined these up so when I flip them and move them around to put the biscuit joints in, I don't forget where it was at. All right, and here we're gonna demonstrate putting in a biscuit. Well, cutting a hole at least. All right, so now that we've got the biscuit joiner doing its work, um, sometimes you'll see this little flap. So what we end up doing is just we get a little sandpaper and sand that off gently. You don't want to mess up your edge because you're gonna. This is gonna be your glue side. So we just run this over gently, kind of clean up all the junk on it, and get those down. That way it has something nice to slip into. Then what I'm gonna do is probably underneath of these spots here, I'll flip it over and I might put in like, this is my Craig Jig tool. It's getting a little old, but man, these things are fantastic. If you don't have one, I think you'll probably love it. This is so strong. So these uh, Craig Jig um, joints. But anyway, I'll probably put, eh, maybe, maybe two, three, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Maybe one in between of the, uh, the marks right there. So I'll just take one here and here and just do two and that'll help hold it together. So anyway, that's uh, kind of what we're gonna do next. I won't show you, this is pretty easy. You know, you just set it. Um, I set most all my stuff for this thickness and a lot of others to seven eighths. So you just slide these to seven eighths and then there's a drill bit that comes with the little kit that you buy. And you just slide this little ring and adjust it so it's seven eighths. Run it through the guides and then, you know, use the screws. And I'm probably gonna end up using I think they're inch and a quarter screws. So, and these are, because this is a, this is a hardwood, so it's got finer threads on it. So that's what we're gonna end up doing. We're gonna probably glue three pieces together at a time and we'll glue, screw, let it sit for a little bit and then eventually slowly put them all together. I won't show you a lot of the clamping, um, maybe a little spot here and there, but in short, that's what we're gonna do. And then once she dries, we're gonna work on epoxy, which I'm pretty pumped about. That'll really spice it up a little bit. So stay tuned. All right, so now it's time for glue up. Uh, what we're gonna end up doing, we're gonna throw some glue on here and use a little spreader to get it nice and even. Once that's done, we're gonna gently tap these footballs in so they're straight. You don't want them, you don't want them rocking like that. You want them exactly straight. So we'll throw a little glue in there too. The other thing now, I want a straight line across this and getting a straight line with something this big, this is 39 by 39, is a little difficult on a table saw, at least for me and what I have. So, a friend of mine on another channel showed me this trick where you get two pieces of Luan board and all I did here was just uh, cut up a piece, glued another piece on it and this is a guide 
for this saw. I love this saw. We used it with a cabin build. Um, probably one of the most used saws that I have up there. This thing's incredible. So in short, what you do is this little guide right here, this edge, is where the side of this will travel on. And then all you need to do is line it up with your line, the one I just drew, like so. Clamp it down, and then you run the saw right along the guide all the way down. Now, once I'm finished up with that, I need to get each of these edges. I want angles on all four of them. So when the table's up and you want to slide in and sit, you won't have you know this corner banging into you. So each of these edges, after I square them up, they'll be four inches in on each side. Then I'll make a cut. So that'll be a 45 degree cut on each corner. And that'll get us closer um, to what we want to finish up with. Now I've already got for the, the two towers that are going to be underneath of this, the tops and bottoms have been cut. I need to run those through the planer, get them all cleaned up. Because the next step is we're going to have a special surprise. We're going to work with another very well-known YouTuber to help out with the uh, mortise and tenor joints, which I'm not very good at, and I have limited wood. This guy is a master. So I'm really looking forward to going over there and work with him. Stay tuned for that bit. It'll be part of this video. Um, so anyhow, we're just doing some of the grunt work, getting this cleaned up. Then we have more planing and sanding to do before we bring it over and work on the next bits. So let's see how this works out. So my planer that I have is only 12 inches wide. Clearly I can't put any of this in, and it doesn't need to be perfect, so I thought, hey, this would be a great opportunity to use the hand planer. I'm trying to get into using hand planers more in chisels. Uh, the YouTuber I just mentioned, is he's really good, and he kind of turned me on to it, so he showed me how to set some things up. Um, so anyway, there's a whole lot of this. I'll fast forward through it. It's you know, a lot of just manual work, but it's pretty satisfying to do. I'll give it that. Here, I'll be marking it off at about four inches. Same for this side. I'm getting this corner cut marked. Repeat this on all four corners. Now this next step, I just found my line and I put this right on the line. So when I make the cut, I knock off this corner. Let's go ahead and take care of this guy. Beautiful cut. So today we're working on putting a nice chipped edge on it. And you can see I stopped here with a router. I didn't want to show a lot of this on film. It's just not super exciting, but it does look really nice. So you can see right in here, what a nice difference. I already did these guys too. Um, you can probably look and see that all the bevels are in here and I've sanded this down. I did 80 then 120, 220, and 320. So it's really bringing out the grain. Um, I'm fighting with this though because it's got a little bit of gap in here. The moisture, because my shop isn't humidity controlled or anything, so these things keep moving on me. So the way you get these out is you put the concave side down like this, and the moisture will pull it and then just straighten it back upward. So that one's gotta go that way. That's the bottom. So it's gotta flip and this one's gotta do this. It's just a constant battle. Okay, for the cabin table build, we've moved on to the next step. So what I've done is out of that large chunk you saw earlier, I cut these four pieces. These larger ones, which they are very beautiful, 
Um, the larger ones will go on the ground and they will be the base of the two pillar design. And then these uh, skinnier ones, this one and the, the farthest one over there, these will go right up underneath the table. And then I'll have probably a couple riser pieces going up that'll connect to the bottom. The design, pardon my sketch, is gonna look something like this, where this is the bottom, this is the top, and there'll probably be two of these. Before those angle cuts, I'm gonna drill holes, and those will be the holes that mount it to this. Now, what I'm gonna be using are these, where you drill out in the table, and then you screw these in and there's a bolt that goes in. The hole that's drilled in here will be oversized. That way it allows a little bit of movement. Keep in mind this table is going to be, you know, in the cabin year round and there's no heat. So, you know, it's going to feel the full effect of um, shrinking and expanding, contracting and all that stuff from the weather and the moisture. So I'm going to try to get this as flexible as possible and it'll be sealed both sides. Um, but anyhow. Right now what we're going to try to do is get these cut to the proper width, at least the ones under the table. And then the bottom one's probably be a little bit wider, just to give it a little better stance. But we don't want them to get into our way when our, you know, we're sitting at the table. We don't want our knees to hit this stuff or our feet to hit those. So I want to try to get them at a happy point. So I've got this all marked. They're centered. It ended up being four inches in from each side. And then ten and three quarters from the edge over. And that's just a double line there if you're looking at it going, hey, it's not on the line. Then what I did is I measured out about center for this, about four inches in on each side. And then the halfway point, made a mark with the speed square, measured this is exactly three inches wide, which was kind of nice. So then I made my marks. These will be for the Forester bit and used a punch just because I want to be really, really sure. Now, I have to get the depth of my Forester bit first, uh, but I'm going to go and run to a local hardware and get these stainless bolts. I'm gonna to try to get inch and a half. So this insert right here is about half an inch. It'll go half an inch into the table. So I wanna get inch and a half or so <clears throat> because these are quite high. You know, these are over four inches. But that way when I countersink it in, the uh, bolts will be buried, but I want a really good bite and I want some leverage because clearly that's not gonna do it. So that'll be my next step, running to the store doing that. And then I'm gonna get this Forrester bit set up so I drill it at a depth that is a little bit shorter than the total distance of this so this thing will bite in at least 80 percent of the way but it won't fully seat inside which is fine i just want to get most of the threads in and most likely on a permanent mount i may put a little blue loctite on the end of this just to make sure but this will never be super tight because i don't want this thing that tight binding it the hole that i drill for this um, the original hole will be the same size as this that way I can seat this, but then I'll go back and hog it out a little bit just to give this some room for expansion because these boards, they will expand this way, not necessarily this way. All right, so this, uh, <laughs> we've got the, the Forrester bit holes drilled. Did that in the drill press, it was a lot easier. It's a, definitely a straighter hole. Uh, now, as far as drilling the hole down into the table, that's where I'm gonna go ahead and use my drill and I have a little block, a stabilizer block that I'll be using. But in order to keep this exactly where I have it in the marks, this setup works pretty darn good. It's solid. It's not going anywhere. So again, I'm going to use my drill blocks, go all the way down. This is already measured exact. I have marks on the drill bit so I know when I plunge it down all the way, that'll go down exactly a half of an inch into the table, which will allow me to go ahead and then and screw in the, uh, the inserts into the table. So that's our next step. We're making killer progress. Super happy with this. Just got to take your time. The holes drilled really nice. So let's see how well they go in. Apologize, I know the angle's a little far away for that, but this one I already started, so I'm cheating a little bit because I wanted to see how far in it went. And I realized that I had to uh, sand the edges a little bit. That is definitely flush enough. Good enough for who it's for. That's what I always say. So these actually thread on quite nice. I'll put a link in the description. I picked these up on Amazon. Um, I'm happy with that. 
yeah see these guys fits in there pretty good the quality's nice and again i did use stainless bolts i had to run to the hardware earlier and they didn't have button head so i ended up getting a socket head just an allen wrench which those will work too i just didn't want anything that's like a 6 or 12 point because going into those forester holes is going to be difficult definitely a job for an allen wrench and i don't have to torque it too tight yeah that is really nice let's get the camera and show that that is so nice Pretty happy with that. Yeah. All right. So the last bit is these holes that I drilled aren't going to quite do it. I thought about drilling a bigger hole. Why? Well, when these are in there, this could move quite a bit laterally back and forth. So rather than screw this right to the table. I've done that before. I've learned my lesson. Don't, don't do that. Um, as this thing stretches and so on, expands and contracts, um, it causes grief and it could crack things. I don't want that, especially if it's going to be up there in the boonies. So basically, I'm going to use this rasp or this other rasp. I'm just going to keep trying them until one of these work better. Um, they're kind of beat up. But <clears throat> I'm basically going to egg this out. I don't have anything deep enough to do it like with a Dremel or anything like that. So basically I just want to oblong this a little bit to allow for a little bit of movement. Maybe an eh, eighth of an inch either way and just get that oval. That's going to take a little bit. Nobody wants to sit and watch a time lapse of that. I don't even want to necessarily do it, but it must be done. So I'm going to get that done in all six of these holes. Then I'm going to test it all out, make sure it uh, screws in really good. The extra room will probably help things out. And then we work on the cuts. Can't wait. That's all we have for this episode, so stay tuned for the next when we complete the rest of this table all the way to being finished. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, there's a lot of cool things we do. We do some epoxy. There's some challenges with uh, the feet. Uh, you'll see all of it in the next one. So again, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.